O Lord, my Creator, Redeemer, and Comforter, as I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, I humbly pray that you would open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. Welcome to this week's uh, video worship, YouTube worship for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, August 30th, 2020, at Christ Memorial Lutheran Church in East Brunswick, New Jersey. If you've got an order of service, please turn to that now and, uh, and, and we'll prepare ourselves for worship by confessing our sins. Please stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your present temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God, our heavenly father, has had mercy on us and has given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, unto, grant this Lord unto us all. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, your son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the epistle reading. The epistle lesson for this 13th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 12th chapter of Romans, beginning at the ninth verse. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. 
For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would, would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Christ. Now we join Christians from around the world and throughout the ages, confessing our common faith in the triune God, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. God's priorities are, are different than ours. He sees forever and plans for it. We see right now and, and hope to make the most of it. So Jesus posed this question. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? And now because of our perspective being so uh, lacking in, in seeing the bigger picture, answering that is, is difficult for us. It's difficult because suffering can seem senseless. Eternity is, to a, a great extent, a vague concept for us, and, and it seems far away. So we need God's help, understanding his perspective, understanding why his plans are what they are, and, 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 and his priorities what they are. We need God's help fitting in to his plan. How does he help? He helps by sending Jesus. Jesus brings God's people good things. In spite of what we experience quite often in this life with its suffering, with its hardships, with its difficulties, he brings his people good things. And that's why he came to begin with. That's why God made Adam and Eve in the garden. That's why he sent Jesus to restore that relationship and this broken life and creation that we live in now, to bring good things to people and especially to deliver them to God's people. 
So Jesus, in this gospel reading for this morning, in this event with his disciples, began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer, be killed, and on the third day, be raised. You see, Jesus had to do that. He had to. He said, I must go and do this in order to bring you and all people the good things that God intends for his creation, for humans, through the forgiveness that he brings to us, the restored life that we have as, as he makes us new in holy baptism, the peace with God that we experience. After living our lives as enemies of God, he comes and he restores that relationship that we have, and we live as people who are now at peace with God, and, are, and we are a people who belong to his family. He puts us into a church where we're baptized, where we're adopted into God's family, and, and, and we're embraced by God's people. And we become part of, of that whole thing that's happening in our lifetime, in, in our place in the world here and now. We get to belong to what God is doing in the world, moving through his word and sacraments to, to bring his good things to as many people as we can possibly touch with that message through our own lives and the suffering that we're often called to endure in this life. So God does bring his people good things. A question that we might ask is why then do we still struggle with, with grasping, even grasping and understanding God's plan? Not in the big sense where we say, well, we generally understand it, but when it comes to the, the particulars of our own life, you know, and we're going through something and, and I don't know about you, I'm sure if you're like almost all of us, you've had to ask at one time or another, or probably a lot of times, well, why God? Why now? Why me? Why this particular thing? Or why to this particular person at this particular time in their lives? Because too often, none of it makes any sense to us. And when people ask us that bigger theological question, why does God allow suffering? Quite frankly, Nobody who, that's going to be honest about their interpretation and understanding of the scriptures is going to be able to give any other answer than we don't really know exactly. We trust God for the big picture, but when it comes to the particulars about why specifically here and now or with that person or that person in that way, we, we don't have an answer that's satisfactory to anybody in terms of of saying, here's the bad thing, and as a result, here's the good thing God does. It doesn't appear that way to any of us at any time. So we struggle, right? We struggle because the old nature cannot see beyond the suffering. That was Peter's problem in this morning's gospel. Peter, it, when Jesus uh, uh, told his, his disciples that, uh, that, that, that he must go, to Jerusalem, suffer, be killed, and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside, uh, Matthew wrote, verse 22. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Peter didn't get the whole idea of suffering and, and the Savior and the necessity for him to do that in order for God to be able to deliver the good things that he has for God's people without doing what only Jesus could do and removing all of the barriers that we have that keep us from experience the life that God has for us, the life of forgiveness and, and, and restoration and, and peace with God and ultimately eternal life in heaven and the whole belonging to the church here and now. None of that could happen without Jesus going to the cross and dying. But Peter couldn't see beyond the immediate. The moment that he was in, that things are going well, the Savior is here. He's working towards restoring Israel to its proper place in, in the world, and certainly God's not going to take that away from us now. We're on the way to victory. We're on the way to overcoming all of that stuff and, and putting it behind us in this life. Peter didn't understand what Jesus had come to do and what was necessary for our salvation, what was necessary to restore the, the, the whole creation that's been corrupted by the sin of Adam and Eve and how it has continued to affect us by it being passed on from person to person through every generation. We're all infected by that. We can't overcome it on our own. Can't be just dressed up or cleaned off, but had to be made new in order 
to have the good things that God is delivering. Not just some empty version of the old, it's cleaned up a little bit, maybe put a, put a coat of paint on it, but to make everything new, Jesus had to come and suffer and die. He had something far bigger in mind than Peter could possibly see at that given moment. Things were going well, and Peter wanted him to keep going well right then and there. He didn't understand how this sacrifice was going to ultimately bring the greatest good to the whole world because Peter couldn't see God's priorities and how and why they were different from our own. Couldn't possibly see it, and neither can we. Our old nature isn't capable of it. But we should recognize sin's damage in our lives and in our world and in our relationships. We should recognize sin's damage and our need for a savior who would come and suffer and die and on the third day be raised. We should recognize how absolutely and ultimately incapable we are of doing any vestige of that for ourselves and how we are totally reliant on God's help to be his people, to be raised to new life from death to life in this life and in the next. How we can't see it, we can't do it. We're totally dependent on this savior who came into our world to bring God's people good things by suffering and dying for them. So do you see what Jesus does for us? His suffering connected you to his rising. Isn't that the way Paul puts it in Romans 6, the baptismal passage? How that baptism isn't just a, a symbol, but it's actually the old nature drown, being drowned and dying with Christ and then being raised to new life with him. How it intimately and, and miraculously connects us to the, to the dying of Jesus on the cross and his rising again uh, 2,000 years ago. How we're so connected to that now that, 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 that dead sinners come to new life in the waters of baptism and are adopted into, into God's family, where then we're able to walk each day in the newness of life, to walk with Christ, and to begin to see things from his perspective as, as, as we hear his word, and it, it opens our mind to the, to the mind of Christ and connects us to that as well. So that's why Jesus says in this gospel reading to, to Peter and to his disciples and us, reminding us that whoever loses his life for, for his sake, for the sake of Jesus, will find it. Whoever loses his life, as we have in the waters of baptism, where that old nature was drowned and, and dies, will find life as we're raised again to newness of life in Christ. Because Jesus' suffering brings forgiveness and, and literally changes you from the inside out. That's what it does for us. That's the power of God's word working uh, the Holy Spirit working through his word in the sacrament of baptism and, and then Holy Communion. And the words of absolution as they literally come to us into our ears and, and make us new inside, transforming us into God's people who can hear his word and, and begin to comprehend it as we learn it and study it. And the Holy Spirit works in us, not just changing our ability or our, 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 our hearing something and being able to logically make a conclusion, but actually making us able to hear and, and believe by giving us the gift of faith through that word and sacrament. So then having this gift, this good thing, this, this precious thing that Jesus brings to us, what can we do? Now you can, you can now can, can confront suffering in a different way. And, and live with Jesus. In, in Romans chapter 12, the epistle reading, St. Paul wrote, um, do not be overcome by evil. Because, you know, and I, I, we gotta, gotta, gotta say here that suffering is evil. It, it, it's, it, it's the result of, of living in a sinful world. Not necessarily because this sin brings that particular evil to you, but because in general, sin is the reason for death and dying, for sickness. Uh, for nature being uh, violent at times and destroying life and property and things. For things being, there being disharmony in, in relationships and, and in nature. 
Uh, the whole spectrum and gamut of life is affected by sin. But St. Paul says, do not be overcome by evil. Don't be overcome by, by the suffering that's the result of the evil in our world. Don't be overcome, but overcome evil with good. And so that's what we can do. You can, and you can do it because you are not alone in this. You have a savior and you can trust Jesus for help and forgiveness because he came into the world for you and he made you his through the waters of baptism. You and, and, and your salvation are the point of God's plans and priorities. So we may not have all the answers about the particulars of all the events in life. Much of it can and will often seem uncertain to us. But this is certain. Jesus will be there with you. He has overcome evil and he did it for you. Amen. Amen. Please stand now for the prayer of the church. Join me in praying for the whole church and for all people according to their needs. For our strength in time of trial and for us to preserve, persevere in grace in the day of trouble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the pastors who serve us, that they may be faithful stewards of God's mysteries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Donald, our president, our governor, and all legislatures and civil servants, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for generosity toward those in need, and for the unemployed and underemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents as they teach their children to know and love the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For compassion and harmony in our life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and those going through difficult times, especially Linda and Linda, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith to receive the Lord's gift of his body and blood in the holy sacrament and the desire to receive it often, and that when we do, we may present ourselves as, living sac as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, grant to us all good things needful and keep from us all things harmful through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, a cheerful hope in your mercy, and a sincere love for you and one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, I have again worshiped you in your presence and received both forgiveness for my many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. I thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep me in faith until, with all your saints, I inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen.